Welcome to Race on Oz, Season 15, Round 5. We're at Sardinia B. We've got a merged field here, Division 1, Division 2. 16 cars, lights are going red. I'm joined by Viper Z, I'm Hatfield, and away we go. Codes on pole from Psydog. And we've got Amazing Hour in third. They're all heading down up the hill to this crazy, crazy turn one. It gets very narrow here. Just over the crest, hitting the brakes hard. We've got... Oh, dive down the inside from Groover there. Oh, it hasn't worked out. Old timer's into the sand, but he's held on to it. Apex two wheels in the dirt. Code still maintains that lead. Whoa. Side by side there. Side, I've got the inside though for the right hander now. Amazing hour waiting for something to happen. Oh, oh, very good. wide. Sardo didn't give him an inch there as Coates found the gravel and lets both of them by. That's not how he wanted to start that race from pole. Of course, the Division 1, Division 2 guys here tonight trying not to get in each other's way. They've got their own races to run. GT King there, though, in fourth. The leader for our Division 2 grid in front of a few of the Div 1 guys in Ranger, Oz and Noodles. Be interesting to see how far up he can finish across here to the Pagnin car of yours truly. Running striking colours I'd have to say. In Div 2 I believe. Not, not for much longer if, <laughs> if he keeps that up. <laughs> Takes a huge chunk of the runoff there. Uh, I think Stewart levels. might want to have a look at it if he keeps doing that. Yeah. Ursine trying to get that slipstream behind. I think Hatfield probably wanting to tag on the back of that pack as long as possible. Sidog's taken the lead from Amazing Hour so Code's not doing well after dropping those wheels in the dirt. Oh, and these guys have only got 16 laps to settle it here, so they will be scrapping to the death, just trying to make sure they can get any edge of track position. Yeah, only a short race, of course, but round five being our sprint round, so we will have a second race after this, which will be absolute mayhem, being that it will be reverse grid. See here, some of the Div 1 drivers just sort of uh, finding their stuff here. GT Kings found a bit of a buffer back to Ranger and Noodles, who are the last of the Div 1 drivers. A very short Div 1 field. Uh, those guys actually preoccupied with a separate Enduro for a lot of the field. I believe there was a six hour race during the day. So a few guys a bit burnt out, unable to make it to the race tonight. But luckily, we've got this Division 2 field to fill the gap. It's looking for a cracking race and cracking race 2 here tonight. Tell you what, how good is it to see a full field again? It has been a little bit of time between full fields, but uh, we're relishing in it at the moment. Bit more of a field spread now on lap two, and there is, uh, of course, one of the fan favourites, John O'Clint, or as uh, as wife and daughter like to call him, Slow Jono. I don't know. Should be in, waving uh... to them tonight. He's in the top room tonight. I don't, I'm not sure you can really label him slow jump. Well, look, I think a top 16 finish is probably a, you know, a good target. He's just uh, biding his time before he pounces to go it's to on the, the podium, cards I think. Too, isn't he? Yeah, I think you can just march through the field here. Well, uh, we'll keep an eye on his progress. And, of course, the reverse grid will be the, uh, the one to keep an eye on as well. Mm -hmm. Team at Emo giving him some healthy slipstream there. Amazing how he's taken the lead. So I'll drop back to third. It's all happening here. You can't look away, can you? This is just position changing left, right, centre. Yeah, well, we've got an amazing hour in the ignition car. Codes, I believe, being a privateer running it was a KFC Chungus livery. Chungus. That's one happy bunny full of some Kentucky Fried Chicken Ranger. Defending from Noodle still. It's a tricky corner, that one. There's sort of a hump as you take the exit. If you get the power down too early, the car likes to spit sideways, and that sand on the exit is closer than you think. Yeah, very difficult, especially to make a pass through there. I actually famously cost Psydog a uh, well tour position by having an incident with him there one time, so... Well done, I'm sure he's forgiving you for that. I hope not. They fly through that final corner. Of course, keeping two wheels on the ripple strip is acceptable with the rest of the car over in the dirt, which seems to be the quickest way. If any indication by all the Div 1 guys basically doing the same thing. Maybe that's why they Div 1. Oh, just any exploit they can find, really. I think the uh, the key to being quick in this game is just finding absolutely any morsel of time you can. And ensuring that Keaton has not shown up because he's busy, so... Pretty much, yeah. Oh, Cody, very close to the grass there on exit. Of course, this being a sprint round, there is no real need to pit, 
but the tires, if you push them, they will be quite worn by the end. So as this race goes on, you should see a little bit more slipping and sliding. As amazing hour already slipping and sliding. Half the car in the dirt. That's given Cody a sniff. He's managed to get the overlap for the inside of the next corner. He can nail All it takes is one up. little mistake. There we go. Change the lead. Here comes Sidog. Oh, he's got a sniff now. This, of course, is helping the guys behind stay with them. GT King, our leader for the Div 2. Now, you'd be wondering if he's holding up Ranger. The idea, of course, being not to hold up the other divisions, but he is very fast. So I'm sure he's not... Drive, don't, it doesn't seem to be driving defensively, he's just driving his lines. And uh, if Ranger goes for a pass with Slipstream, you'd expect that he'd probably not fight him for it. I'd say he's well within his right to be where he is. Ranger probably close enough to have a sniff here. Backs out no, of it. He's backed out of it. Had a look. Look at that there, it's an absolute rear mirror. Though, <laughs> rear mirror full of <laughs> Range Ross. It's tricky in that for Ranger to get that slipstream pass done. Uh, GT King also has the slipstream of Psydog ahead, so as soon as he pulls out of that slipstream, he loses the advantage. So it's a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for GT King. I mean, obviously he's got not a lot to lose here. He's you know, comfortably in the lead of the Div 2 race at the moment, but there's a bit of a uh, bit of further glory up for grabs here. Well, I think GT King would probably be going for the championship. There's only a few rounds to go, so we've got tonight and two more. Uh, he's won all but one of the races in which he placed second due to an unfortunate uh, T-bone that he was on the end of. Oh, so up into the dirt. Ranger now having a look at GT King down the inside. He's found that opportunity. They do well to keep it side by side through there without running off. Oh, that's a moment. Oh, dropped the oh. wheel. That's keep well into the grass. And uh, that is one way, I suppose, to get out of the Div 1 driver's way. <laughs> <laughs> the field is now split, but he still has a slipstream of the cars ahead. And there is a nice chunky gap there behind. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how impressed GT King will be with that one from uh, Ranger Eyes. There wasn't a lot of room shown on the entry to the final corner there, and he's just sort of had no choice but to use a bit of that grass. So It's not like he could either back, he could back out of it either, being no. that Noodles was right there. Absolutely right. It was, you know, this is the second time out. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> oh, well, damned either way, but now he's uh, got some clean track around him. Be interesting to see how long he can hold on to that front pack for if he does drop back. The Stiv 2 field as well, visibly splitting themselves apart. You've got that uh, that chasing pack of Hatfield, Ursine and Tubster with, I believe that was Groover following in behind after he actually nearly had an off at the first corner. So he's done yes, well to maintain went, position. Went down the inside, got a bit squirrely. Old timer was the unfortunate car on the outside there, but luckily managed to keep most of the car out of the dirt. So he's in there, another couple of positions back behind Banana Josh, you can see in the distance. He's got a bit of a train behind himself as well, with, of course, like you said, Old Timer following in him with Apex Disco. Well, someone's wide in the background there, one of the ignition cars. Yes, I think it might have been Stu. Oh, very slidey. Got ammo for company. Getting a good tow. Very close company. Side by side across the line. Ammo's got the advantage. I think he's cleared him. He has. Switches the defensive, the inside line, but Stu has got no reply. And moved on for ammo. Up to 14th. Clinical there. From uh, one of the oldest peddlers in the field, but God, he can still get it done, can't he? Oh, it's, you're never too old when it comes to sim racing, I think. You know, if I could... Uh, <laughs> a lot of the Div 1 guys will say this, and whether whether people know it or not, if we could get to Emo's age and be this good still, we would be uh, very, very happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think after, what, 70-odd plus years on the planet to be still knocking around. You know, he's in the top room tonight. Yes, we had a merge, but still, he's doing something right. Exactly right. You've got some of the uh, the world's best Grand Turismo Sport players right in front of you here with Amazing Hour, Side Oak, Ranger Oz Noodles, Codes, and uh, joining the track with them is Ammo. So that is uh, an achievement in its own, I believe. Oh, he can say he's shared the road with the best, and I think they could say the same about him. 
So all fly through that last corner. Lots of grass being torn up. Groundskeeper's not going to be happy. Oh, he'll be, uh, he'll be using some choice words in Italian, I dare say. Oh, we actually, we've had an off here. Where is that car? It's old timer. Oh, old timer. Not a race for him tonight. After right. that first turn being out wide, and now something's happened here. Very easy to drop a wheel. He uh, was to be the, quick uh, here, you sort of have to be all over the track and come off second best. Yeah, he was the lead ignition car in Div 2 as well, so I'm sure that'll be a bit disappointing for those guys. Speaking of ignition, amazing art. Still in the lead. Yeah, he's, uh, I was about to say as well before we had that off from whole time, he's gotten a bit comfortable here, but Sidewalk just seems to have reeled him in a little bit more. Uh, tie wear's identical actually, so these guys are just uh, making the use of their Michelin rubber. And, you can uh, see the right hand side there, a lot more wear than the left. Naturally being a uh, counterclockwise circuit of course. Brake balance you can use to sort of help with front to rear, um, but the, I guess, counter trade of that being longer braking distance. There's a side dog dropping two wheels! <laughs> you do not want to be out there. That's a, uh, a bit too much grass as he proves to us once again what a bit more grass can do and this is going to open the door for Coes if he can get just close enough to have a sniff into turn one. Yeah, I think he's got the slipstream. It looks to be closing. Will he take a dive? He's having a look. No. Backs out of it. Thinks so. it. Yeah, <laughs> have a second thought about that one. No ripple strip on the outside here, of course. You can see all the grooves through the dirt. So it makes it even even harder. If you do knock someone off, these stewards will have a word to you about it. Deciding not to have a look here either. And Sardog just pinches a brake there coming into that corner, so he's, uh, he's pushing it to the limit. Deceptive right-hander here. You think you can get the power down and then the track sort of creeps up on you as it, the crest completes. Drops away, doesn't fast, it? Fast, fast, flat-out downhill section to another hard braking right-hander. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, it's got this bump on the exit. You should feel it there. It's the car's twitch. Speaking of twitching too, Cy just doesn't seem comfortable in that Porsche right now. He's got Coes all over him. These two are very familiar with that car, having both picked it for the uh, manufacturer series at certain times. You've got Ranger and Noodles closing in as well. This battle helping them stay in it. And all the while, letting Amazing out. Get a bit more of a, a gap. Can, uh, Codes again with the slipstream. You can probably put Will his he head have down a go this time? Way. He's right there. He doesn't. He doesn't Could want it be to. a case of trying to push Psydog to, to keep with Amazing Hour? I suppose they know that if they, if they battle for too long, he'll just skip away. It really depends. Does Codes think that Psydog is in the slipstream of Amazing Hour? Because if he is, then uh, by all means, push him up and get a big scrap going. But at the moment, Codes is sort of just... You know, he's becoming more and more vulnerable to Ranger and Noodles behind, so... Real tough one to judge. Let him know what you think about his strategy. Looks like he's got an OnlyFans account there. <laughs> I think his strategy is to make money off that. Apparently he also loves Matt Simmons, you can see on the rear of his car. So there's our gap. From Div 1 to Div 2, GT King there. The healthy lead over Ursine. So oh. Hatfield's dropped a spot. Change of position. We've just got Tubster for company now. Let's look at that Ooh, tire Ranger. there. Ranger! Okay. Oh, he's had an off there. That's been awkward. Now he's vulnerable from Ursine in Div 2. He's still got the dirty oh, tires from being off. This is awkward. This is really awkward because we Ursine's know Ranger. Got the spot now. He'll have the pace over Ursine, but I mean, what else can Ursine do at that stage? It's got a lot of wear though. Just compared to Ursine, yeah, wow, using the fronts a lot more there. He would have been in that Div 1 battle pack, so the slipstream while helpful on the straights. It's a bit of a hindrance in the corners because you've lost that arrow, so you're using more tyre grip to make the corner speed, and in turn that wears the rubber off. So it's uh, not the trade-off you want when tyre wear is an issue towards the end of the race. Absolutely right, and a great technical insight there from our uh, our man currently on the podium still in Div 2. Still For how much around. longer? Tubs still looking dangerous. Yeah, that game's a wear there. Up. So while that analysis might be spot on, the uh, driving isn't, <laughs> as far as tyre saving goes. 
Well, you know, as they say, those who can't do, teach. <laughs> those who can't teach, commentate for the Super B team. What was that? I don't know. Tuck boat? No, just technical difficulty. Right. Just as we see Tubster with the slipstream on Hatfield. God, that feels oh. weird to say, but oof, he's really gaining on him there. The braking performance from Tubster there, he pulls right up to the back of him, using a bit of a different line to carry the main mid-corner speed. If he's this close onto the straight, he'll have to have a look. Yeah, it'd be silly to waste that opportunity right up behind now. He's definitely got a good chance going into turn one. Doesn't look like oh, it's got any that's slipstream very ahead. close. Was that contact oh, there? I think there might have been. We'll soon see if he goes for the pass or not. No, he's sort of hung back, so... Just watch the throttle might trace, have been the case. So if there's been a bit of contact, you'd assume he might actually back off just to make sure he doesn't throw an overtake. Although he's probably not quite close enough anyway. I think the, the throttle lift came um, on the straight. Because he had... Oh, screwily. That was a twitch. Wow. He, had a, he had a good exit. Um, but yes, he didn't make the gain there. So I'll say he lifted one. before we jumped on board. Still though, oh, very wide there. I felt struggling with these tyres, but looks at things. Tubster once again, all over him again. And he's able to get alongside, isn't he? He can just put the nose where he wants to. He's definitely got the front tyre life over Hatfield now. He doesn't want to stay, stay behind for too long. He's got drivers up ahead he'd like to catch. Tubster, of course, in this championship fight for Division 2 with GT King and Ursine. And there again, you can just see that braking performance closing right up. And this is giving him an opportunity, actually. Oh, the nose go. is poked. Not just thinks better there. of it. He can smell it. He knows he's got it. He's just got to find the right place to do it without contact. Yeah, the question's definitely where. There's, uh, there's a couple spots you can sort of pinpoint where Tubbs has got the pace advantage. But, you know, trying to, trying to pick it over a lap, very difficult. Must have, must have had a... Not such a good corner there, because he dropped off Amazing Hour. Big gap now to the guys behind. And look at the times he's been running, just consistent mid-23s, whereas the guys behind, divvying in the 24s. How are his tyres looking to them? Uh, let's have a quick look. About the same. Yeah. So, so the it's size just, got... the, it's just the fighting. Yeah, he's got a bit of a better rear tyre life going on than Amazing Hour. Oh, it's very similar again, and Noodles, you know, pretty much uh, square on there. GC King sharing, again, a very similar wear point. And Ursine, those are very fresh Michelins on that car. And I think as a consequence, that'd be why Ranger is seeming to drop off the back. Yeah, they go. Much higher wear there for Ranger. So, um, it's a considerable amount, isn't it? And Hatfield, you're struggling with a similar situation, whereas Tubster... Again, looking after his rubber a little bit better. Oof, Apex. not like that, you won't. And again, there you go, look at that from Apex, so... Bit of uh, masterful tyre saving again. Interesting, though, that Tubster had closed right up, but now the gap has sort of extended a little bit again, so... You can see that in the background, yeah. He's just struggling to get that, uh, that dicey Maybe his tyres have, have sort of hit that point, and he's starting to struggle a little bit as well. Matching it with everyone else, you think? Sort of like if you, if you can get that advantage on the tyres, you don't have that much time to to spend. Moment there, oh, it's oh ammo. ammo! He's found the wall at the final corner. Really awkward there. He was dicing with, I believe that was Banana Josh, Disco Stew, and his teammate Slow Jono. So that's a shame. It's a real shame. He's got some leftover damage there, at the front left. That'll be um, I feel like a demotion to the front of the grid. <laughs> yeah, for race two, if uh, things stay as they are, you'd have an old timer and MO front row. Slow John, not looking so slow. All over the back of Disco Stew now. He's playing the long game. Disco Stew with again, a little bit of a, uh, a advantage in the tyre wear sense of things. Just following in behind Josh here. He's probably just picked up traces of Slipstream too, so he's probably safer he is at the moment. But... Not long to go now, only three laps, two and a half. Seems like this he's got the quick. slipstream from Banana Josh there. How are the tyres looking between those two? If I can press a button on my keyboard. Oh, oh it's Disco Stew. Josh is very, very heavily worn, so I think you might see these two guys behind be able to pass him in the next few laps. 
And you'd hope that Josh would be using uh, heavily rearward brake balance to try and combat that. Uh, of course, there's... Oh, oh, slow Jono with the dirt! <laughs> That was a moment. And here's oh, another one. Josh has missed the apex completely there. He's just turned in at the wrong point and gone almost straight on. Big moment. Just Stu now. Oh, John would be kicking himself there. If he hadn't put two wheels off the track, he'd probably have a, an opportunity as well. Oh, oh. They're diving everywhere. <laughs> he doesn't know which way to go. He was, I think uh, he was a little bit confused by Josh moving slightly to take the uh, sort of curved <laughs> straight there. <laughs> I'm on the left, I'm on the right. He's everywhere. In the end, he was nowhere but behind. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, ho, ho. Very well held. But can he hold it around the outside here? Oh, he has. He can. With the state of his front right tyre, wow, how has he done that? Some very skillful driving, I'd have to say. It's not bad at all, is it? Here we go. So front, this front three's still going. And we're about Nose to start to the tail. final lap. I think you'd have to say, barring any incident, amazing how he's probably got this one sewn up. Yeah, he's, uh, he's sort of signed, sealed, and all but delivered at this stage. This guy's still just running that groove straight through the grass. The Italian man is very unhappy uh, off stage. His Coe's now pulls out of the slipstream. He's looking to get something done. There's only one lap to go now, so this is the, the battle for a second. Noodle's waiting patiently. He's not going to be able to cut in there. So dog Placing the car perfectly. That was very close to an overlap. And Noodles, Noodles has found it. He's found taking a gap advantage out of, of nowhere. Of Cody fighting with Sodog there to have a look. He's got the move done. Oh, and he moves across to block Cody from getting the inside there as well. But he's moved across too soon. Cody switched back on him. Wasn't enough, was it? Noodles again finds himself in fourth place. So with a little bit of breathing room now heading into this, uh, this uphill right-hander where it seems he's been a little bit weaker than the rest of the field. So Noodles had a podium spot for all of one corner. Oh, that's more than I had. still holding on to the fifth. Oh, this one still oh, isn't settled, Noodles. No, oh. that's not going to help. No, he's probably no, just... Uh, he's thrown that away. <laughs> he's had his ticket refunded there. Final corner for the final time in race one. PX7, amazing hour. Flashing the lights. He's happy with that one, isn't he? Very hard fought victory. Soto holds on for second. Cody with the uh, spin across the line to complete the podium. We've got GT King first in Div 2 with Ursine. And in the end, looks like Tubster got Hatfield right at the death. Bit of a photo finish third. there. It was close. Apex. Groover. In the background, we've got... Oh, Slow Jono. He's got past Disco Stew. Oh, he's found it, hasn't he? Up to 13th. Oh, maybe one more lap, he'd be saying. Banana Josh holds on to that position. Ammo with after the disappointment. Same with Old Timer with that spin that they each had to round out the field. So we'll see you in race two. Yes. As I just said, see you at race two, and here we are. Sardinia, road track B, reverse grid for race two. The revs are high. We've got Old Timer and Emma on the front row. It's going to be tricky for the Div 1 guys to make their way through the Div 2 field. Hopefully they'll help out by moving out the way when possible. These Div 1 guys just have to be really careful coming to turn one here. They will be quick in the Div 2 field. Lights are red. Revs are high. And they're green. Oh, some interesting starts through the field there. Already we're going three wide. Apex jumping down the inside of Banana Joss there. Old Time has fallen back already past the row two guys. They come flying through. Old Time are looking down the inside oh, there. Look on at that at the back. Teammate, some contact everywhere. Oh. oh, everyone luckily keeping it off the dirt. Very well done. How did they make it through there? Oh, Hatford down the inside of Apex. Oh, oh Apex boy, moves over. They've got some contact. Oh, oh there's an old time around oh, again. No. Oh, there's been a oh, big one there. Oh, them around. Oh, there's Amazing Owl. Oh, oh, Apex no. has lost two. Noodles Apex spinning well on the ripple strip up. there. Oh, so a few different guys Apex. now having to... Do some massive catch-up. Old-timer starting on the front row to end up 15th again. 
not what he wanted from tonight. It's been a torrid night for him and as well our race one winner PX7 Amazing Hour who <laughs> quickly makes up a spot on Noodles but he was caught up in that one as well so huge news coming out of the Div 1 camps. Oh, massive, massive problems through the field there. Ammo Look who skipped away. In the, in the prime hot seat first position with a big gap back to Slow Jono who is anything but at the moment. Well, it's an NLR 1-2 as well. We haven't seen this uh, all season, I don't think. Oh, I don't know how much longer we're going to see it. We've got Groover in that silver bullet looking car, making up ground hand over fist. Is it, is it silver or is it more of a blue? Oh, let's just compromise and say grey. I think it's black. Okay, well you might be colour blind as we have Disco Stew behind them. Followed by Ranger, who is our lead Div 1 driver at the moment. Oh, battle here with Div 2 guys, with the Div 1 guys trying to get through. Codes has a look. Oh, Josh. They don't know if he saw him there. No, oh, that was bloody close. He's got, he's got the inside now, though. GT King's still trying to get where, by. Where did Sidel come from? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even oh. see him until you mentioned <laughs> it. Far out. I think he just grabbed like two or three positions in the space of two corners. Going Maybe out of here as well. He's the magic man. Now you see him. Now you don't. Oh, Stu side trying to by chuck side it up there. there. Very well done, though, to keep the space by both of them. Hey, there's top stop. Oh, oh, nothing to do there. Oh, Noodles caught the rear there. Looks like that amazing hour. Getting trying to get by Ursine. It's on the outside of that tricky corner that's he's normally that flat. Down. Ranger Ross still leading the Div 1 field. He's got a comfortable gap too, so the next car we've got in the Div 1 field is to Codes. Codes in 7th seven. there. It's really going to come down to can you get cleanly past the Div 2 guys without being held up for long. Oh, there, there we go. That's There's really the well done. Both of them making it easy for Cody to get through. It's fantastic. Or they'll be able to do oh. the same for... Oh, he's touched the dirt though. He's had a moment. Side dog here also looking to get through to keep the battle going. Uh, he hasn't made up ground there. Yeah, he's just been delayed a little more. I'm sure he would have liked to have gotten past Hatfield there with that left hand up, but... Not just not close enough. Yeah. We'll see what happens down the hill here. Yeah, it's surely the run here. You'd think that um, Hatfield would just have the peace of mind here to jump out of the way and let him through. And he has a look. No. But not close enough. Oh. Oh, there you go. Doors that, wide open. Is there that you purposeful? Go. I can't tell. Hard to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll leave that one alone. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard to say. Yes, is the answer. But. Yeah. Oh, Ranger now looking for a way past Groover saying, come on, Cody's right behind me. Oh, he's closed up, hasn't he? That'll be definitely the slipstream now for Cody's. As ammo runs up oh. real wide at the final corner. With an NLR 1-2 in the grass now. I, I, I can't think of a pun. Tricky here. No, don't worry about it. They're all trying to be defensive. It means it's difficult for the Div 1 drivers to find a way through. What'll happen here? Has a look. Gets it done. Oh, ammo! Oh, Again. Big 11s, he's through the dirt. Rangers hoping Groover would be between them, but hasn't pulled it off. Cody looking down the inside there. Not quite. Here we go over the race lead. Oh, Ranger does not want to see this. <laughs> he gets past Jono. Makes easy for codes as well. So I think we've got a real battle for the lead now in Division 1. And we've got a bit of a gap, but once these two guys try to get through... Oh, a menacing Astro Porsche of Psydog just appearing in the background. We're going to make this a three-way fight before we know it. They're all over the road here. Emma getting swallowed up with Groover right behind who he is fighting for that Division 2 race. Yeah, so Ammo still hanging on to that Div 2 race lead currently and yes it is Groover in P2 and we seem to have had... Oh, John Eclid still hanging on there, that would be P3 currently. Oof. Amazing hour there. This right in the slipstream. Amazing arrow. He'll be wanting to get by these two here. He doesn't want to get caught up in a, a scrap for the Div 2 positions. 
You're sweet trying to let him buy, but unfortunately, also letting Hatfoot buy. There we go. Which is not what he was attempting to do. Oh, it, was a, it was a bit courageous of him to let the guy go, but uh, yeah, the downfall is, of course, a new driver on the podium, which is Hatfield. Oh, yeah, second. No, sorry, third. Chasing Emo and Groover for Div 2. Ranger still with the lead, but for how long? Oh, oh into the dirt. Not That's going to give Cody a big sniff. Not long. We gave him the commentator's curse there, and it'll be Cody's with all the opportunity here coming into this uphill right-hander. Again, just chooses to stay behind. We've got Sidog having a sniff here at Groover. Gets it done for P4, P3. Can't quite get MO, though. Oh, amazing hour. Big that slide. Was sideways. That Wheel was in the sideways. dirt. Groover's touched the dirt there on exit. That's really slowed him up. Johnny got menacing GT King behind. Ursine a bit further back than he'd like. Same with Tubster, you'd have to say. Something could have happened there. Yeah, he was fighting for uh, nearly the race lead in Div 2 last race, so that's not gone too well for him. Neither has oh, that. Neither has that. <laughs> dear, oh dear. As my, as my kids would say, Jinx can't talk to or say so. But I won't say that, because I need a co-commentator. Well, thank Amazing you. how he's gotten through these guys. And for now, all over the back of Groover. Will he learn his lesson and save his tyres? Uh, you'd hope so. Again, another well, 16 lapper here. Having a look down the inside. Not quite. He's got to get a move on if he get away from GT King, who is closing in behind. So GT King... Did he close up? So it was... Some side by side up ahead. Ammo yeah. trying to hold Groover off. Doesn't look like he'd be able to do it here. Groover oh. on the inside line. He's made it stick, has he? There we go. He's just gotten it done. Good move there for Groover. Just made sure he had the nose in the exact oh, spot he wanted. Oh, now having a look at the inside ammo. Oh, ammo's being mugged now. Oh, he is GT King. King for company. Going from bad to worse for the uh, NLR driver with his teammates up in, or down in, I should say. Going back to P11 as John Oakley. Oof. He's got Urs on Saturn now, the third NLR early. car. You think he'd let him go pretty soon? Urs on having a lot of pace there. Not a bad idea. Emo's actually got a good run here, but he's got GT King right there. He's going to put the, the nose in before he can do anything about it. Ooh, and Hatfield's oh, and right there. Oh, no. He slipped off the podium that, as a result. All that work. Undone. And this man, too, after a torrid lap one, has uh, found himself in P4 and not too far off the race lead. Mm, he'll be chasing them down if that race one pace is anything to go by. Oh, he's Ranger's been still holding that lead from Cody. He's had a few scares as Ranger, but he's hanging on to it for now. Code's no slouch, so he will be pushing him to his limit. Depending on pace, he wouldn't want to sit there too long if Ranger's holding him up, because you can bet that side dog will be closing in. Yeah, well, these guys setting low 23s last time, almost identical lap times. And Sai with, again, a low a 23, bit less, so... It's still pretty close. I, I think the pace is okay for these guys. I'm not sure Sai will make huge inroads before the end of the race if it stays as it is. It would depend on the tyres, wouldn't it? How much did they use fighting through the rest of the field to get to this point? Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, Amazing Hour, you'd think, would have used a bit more than everyone in there. He it's, has, uh, as you said. Pretty obvious there. Groover having to fend off from a fair few guys. Similar to wear rate. GT King now. Oh, oh and he's put the hazards on, saying, oh, oh, I don't kidding. want to fight with you. I you're need kidding. to save those tyres. That's for the lead of the race in Division 2, but oh. I guess Groover <sighs> believes that he does not have it in him. Do you... To be fair, GT King has had unbelievable pace all season. Now yes. half a second clear of the field on average. Absolutely right. But do you really Stella just drives. leave it down to that and, uh, and let him have the spot? Well, considering the tie where you have to, to think about, he, uh, he knows that there's other drivers that'll be closing in. Yeah. You can see already. Big gap there after a few corners. Ammo holding onto the back of Noodles. That's helping him immensely. Hatfield unable to close the gap after falling off at the exit of turn one. Banana Josh for company. 
Ammo is still importantly hanging on to that P3 spot now in the reverse grid race. So that would be... Oh, Josh! Josh in the weeds is what that would be. Here it would be Hatfield and P4 with John O'Clint sitting P5. And depending on where Josh has rejoined, he will be P7 with Ursine sat in P6. Not sure he does want to let Ursine go here. <laughs> um, I yeah. suppose he's the team captain. Captain's orders. Uh, Captain, yeah, well, I, I just don't know, yeah, words. And listen, how's Ursine tyres looking compared to them? They're not, not that worn. Yeah, a little bit fresher though, Ursine was probably the best on tyres come race one, and here he goes down the here inside. Here he goes. Good move that actually, pulled out real late and made him sick. Banana, Banana Josh not able oh. to follow him, got to change the lead. It's Codes. Cody's found a way past Ranger Oz. That very abstract looking Cayman GT4 we mentioned before with OnlyFans, Big Chungus, and KFC on it. He is now I leading. do love Matt Simmons as well, just FYI. We, we all back. love Matt Simmons, it's just Codes Who feels doesn't? the need to uh, to display it more than anyone else. Be interesting good here on now. Will he be able to pull away? Oh, not with, not with some dirt in the tyre like that. No, it's not Ooh. really a, much of a time loss just picking up the dirt out there. Can Ranger fight back, though? What about there? Uh, again, with that sort of flick up, you'd probably assume he hardly felt that. Checking it through here, there's probably a lot more. Both of them. And there is. There we go. He's got the slipstream. Cody's staying left. Not all the way, though. He's leaving the door. Ranger having a look. Dog licking his lips. Gets the move done. Keeps Psydog his line. He's joining too. This, this pack of three now. He's right amongst it. He is uh, he is in for a shot at this race lead now. So it's seven to go now. Oh, oh not out there. You won't. All that wide. That'll affect your lap time. I wasn't sure any of them were making that corner. <laughs> that corner is uh, very deceptive. It's it's easy flat with a fresh tyre, but these tyres, as you can see, are far from fresh. Amazing how be seeing this. You're almost back in it after that not so happy start. Yeah, a little bit further off, but lapping really consistently. Again, low 23s just dipped into the mids. When well, we see race leader here, Ranger Oz. Uh, semi similar, 23 9 being the outlier there. And there was uh, That was the change for the lead that we saw between Codes and himself. About half a second time loss. Not too bad, overall. I think Codes has got a lot more to say about it. He's just stuck to the rear bumper of Ranger, and I think he may do exactly what Ranger did to him coming down this main straight now. We'll have to see if Ranger decides to stay to the left to block that run. And he does. That is hard left. And we have lost all land capabilities here, so the um, internet has completely dropped out. Not sure if we'll have Hatfield back, but that is Ranger there. Being very defensive coming to that corner, and he will hold on to P1 for now. Coming through here, only six laps remaining. These three are duking it out hard again, just dipping those tyres out into the right-hand weeds. We will have to absolutely forget that the internet has cooked itself on my end. This is uh, completely my issue. Uh, I'm going to try and press on with it no matter what. And now it's side up with all the opportunity codes. It's just slacked off a little bit in that opening sector, so... And then right back on him. So these guys are just sort of playing cat and mouse. Inching up and then just sort of backing up, waiting for an opportunity. Very hard to look any other way. As there goes the party as well. So there'll be a bit of a change in audio there. My apologies. Uh, we will press on with this one. There is only six laps remaining. About five to go now after Ranger crosses the line. Uh, in a very frustrating way to end this Super B Team event. And we've had a huge spinner actually back there. That was Tubster, who's ended up backwards. Uh, no damage to the car. He's just clobbered the Armco wall. Uh, I can only assume he's dipped a tyre in the grut somewhere down there. So, yeah, Tubster has had a, a night to forget, I think is the easy way to put it. So we'll go forward to someone whose night is probably going to want to be remembered as Coves looking around the outside. That is not a normal place to be overtaking a Sardinia. We've seen it many times before in some of the World Tour events. I think 
Maybe it was Tatsuk in the Ford who uh, importantly got it done, but Codes just hanging onto it here, coming through that difficult left hander. As the tyres wear, like I said, he is just struggling to hang on to that. Look at his tyre wear, very, very similar to what Ranger's got under the car. So these guys should be, you know, close to tail the whole way till the end now. Equal machinery, equal tyre wear. They're all looking for a way to get past. These uh, Cayman GT4s proving to be absolutely excellent choices in weaponry when it comes to battling on track. And Sardinia so far proving a fantastic battleground for these guys. This stopper is separated by no more than half a second right now with only four laps remaining. And there he is, our leader and winner from race one. He is just watching this battle and he is closing in ever so slightly. It was a 23-9 last time out from Amazing Hour. These guys still punching 23.9, so impressive stuff. Uh, that wasn't a drop from me, Hatfield, because I'll just take it. <laughs> <coughs> Horrible timing for a cough, but it's Codes is having to defend from Sidog. Around the outside, can he get it done? There's Ranger in the dirt as well. Codes has actually got the right line for this, and Sidog manages to get around his outside still. Codes will still be the one on the attack here if he can get it through this corner, and he can't, he's off in the weeds. Still, he manages down the inside of Ranger. Ranger just cuts him off in time. Ridiculously close here at the front. These three cannot be separated no matter what happens. And Ranger will be breathing a sigh of relief as he comes down onto the back straight. Now these two, Simon, Psydog, he's getting a little more angsty now. He wants to get something done knows he might have a little bit better pace and he sees that man in P4, PX7 Amazing Hour coming at them now at a rate of knots. As we catch up now with the Div 2 leader, GT King, who I think it's safe to say has sewn this one up already. Give or take any instance that may happen as he puts all four wheels out there. That is not what the Div 2 race leader wants to be doing. And he does it again. So he's had a bit of a scrappy Exit there, so the lap. Takes curse again, playing part. Here we go, Codes. He's found the inside this time. And he's got the brakes. And Simon trying to go around the outside. As Codes runs deep. And Ranger, oh, there's been some contact there. Codes has found himself in the gravel. And Sidon with the racing line will take second place off. So, Codes, that's his name. Who again finds the dirt, but this time can't fire it down the inside. So that is a change for position now for P2 with two and a half laps remaining. These guys keeping it as tight as possible now. Minimal time loss is the name of the game. And I think Ranger sort of look in his mirrors and start re-evaluating how he has to defend from Sato, who was of course the Nürburgring World Tour Champion in 2019 for Manufacturer Series. So a very tough ask from Ranger, but he is more than up to the job as we now enter the final sector on that 14. Okay, it's obviously dropping a huge chunk of time there. Try to get more of a, uh, a whole shot here. These guys, we can just see Amazing Hour creeping in the background. Anything happens, he will be there to pounce. You'd have to assume too that Amazing Hour will take the uh, the round win if it all stands. We'll see what codes can see here from on board. Down in the bumper of this Cayman GT4, it's Ranger who goes defensive once again. He has held it from this position before. Side of trying around the outside, he breaks just a little earlier than Ranger who locks it up. Side of trying for the over under, but codes is there. <coughs> and he's taken the spot too, so. Sidewalk unable to get it done on Ranger, who Codes is now trying. Ranger sweeps around the outside once again. It's deja vu here as Codes runs it wide. Sidewalk is right there for the position. Can he get it done around the outside here? Codes is blocked by Ranger. Sidewalk with a little more exit speed around the outside of that fake airbin. And that's wonderful from Sidewalk. He gets the move done on Codes. Fantastic racing here in the front. This is what we came to see, a three-way battle now with just more than one lap remaining. Oh, Ranger runs a wide, no! Ranger has gone off here at a crucial point, let them both go. He's gonna fight for it, but Codes around the outside, he'll have a bit better exit speed. 
And these guys will go side by side now. But Codes round the outside, takes P2 back, and it's Rage. They're both off here. They've both gone into the grass. Ranger, he's going to lose his spot to Amazing. Yeah, there's contact. Huge contact there. It's Ranger. It's gone from bad to worse than the man who was leading this race for oh so long. And he's ended up well back in P4. He will be absolutely distraught with how that's ended up. Terrible stuff, and you can see he's just trying to get some of the grass off his tyres. But I'm sure he is not a happy man behind that wheel of that Porsche. Someone who I'm sure doesn't quite mind her. That went down. Psydog too has found himself with a healthy margin now in front of the Astro-sponsored Porsche. Where did that come from? That was huge. That was lots of drama there to end that race. Not sure anyone saw that one coming. Codes now has found himself with the race one winner to contend with. Big <laughs> Stefan Amazing, he's found himself on the podium. Incredible stuff at Sardinia. The sprint races always offer up a fantastic formula for racing, and once again, we've seen it. That was chaos at its finest. So these guys will sweep around the back straight. Ranger will just have to watch as what could have been a potential win this season brought to you by Next Level Racing. It, uh, it has disappeared. Underneath him, almost a lap ago now, at this very spot, he lost the position to Psydog. The rest is history. We'll go on board now with Psydog. Jump in here as he's coming around the penultimate corner. One more apex to hit, one more line to take. And it will be Psydog as he rounds that final corner. Coming down now, Codes is too far back to do anything about it. It will be Psydog 2 to take the victory. For race two here at Sardinia, Codes grabs P2, Amazing Hour finishes off P3, Ranger distraught with P4. GT King grabs the win in Div 2, fantastic race for GT King. P6, we have Noodles, P7 for Groover, P8 Ammo for a great recovery drive considering the battles he was in. Ursign for P9 and our man who dropped out from the commentary team, Hatfield in P10. Old timer leads home P11 with Josh just bringing it home in P12 over a very fast charging Apex. With Jono in 14th, who had such a good start, just couldn't keep it going. Disco Stu comes up in 15th, and Tubster, who he saw just make some really unfortunate errors, will bring a round for P16 in the games when racing team Porsche. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all she wrote. That was a chaotic, chaotic sprint race, but I think it's exactly what we expect to see, and it's what we've seen time and time again. And uh, I think it's why most of us love the sprint races. I, I'm not sure how many of you I speak for when I say that. But uh, they are one of a kind and they're one of Roo's uh, real specialities. I was absolutely gutted to not have uh, been able to race in that one. That looked like a lot of fun. But of course, congratulations to Amazing Hour who has taken out that round win. So congratulations to him in the Ignition sponsored Porsche. And it was GT King who swept both races for the round win in the Gamesman back Porsche for Div 2. So both these gentlemen now inching ever so close to a outright title for their divisions. And uh, there's not many rounds to go. It's two rounds remaining now. We've got the final round will be at, I believe it is Suzuka, if I can just get myself a quick calendar. Uh, there's some pretty good tracks on offer now for only the final two rounds. Uh, it's crazy that we've only got two rounds remaining and they are both absolute blinders, but these guys will be looking to put their best foot forward after we've had a week off for the Queen's Birthday long weekend. And the final two rounds will be Suzuka Circuit this weekend, where I dare say we'll see a bit of a bump up with numbers. And then the season finale for all divisions will be at the Nürburgring GP for Retro Round. And I cannot wait to see you guys there for Suzuka Circuit. And this has been... The Super B team with only me at the end, but you know the ritual. <laughs>